parents that care. And I, I'm sorry to say, that comes generally mostly from Christian parents yeah. who are built to know or who are raised to know that somebody loves them. No matter what happens, you have somebody that, that loves them. That, that's somebody of God. You have this framework that yep. sort of makes it safe to sort of be who you are. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, and that's how I grew up. How'd you get in your family? Oh, suddenly. Like, yeah. literally suddenly. Just I was decided to start? I was doodling on the kitchen table, and my, these are like verbatim words coming up. But I was drawing on the kitchen table, you know, it's like, oh, this is pretty good. I can do this for a living. I can do this for a living! It was literally like that. <laughs> That's how sudden uh-huh. it was. Oh, right. Yep, in the aha uh-huh moment, it was exactly that. It's like, I could do that. I could do that. You told them that. I thought that was crazy. I mean, they were going to stop me. They were like, really? It's like, yeah. I wasn't that great. Yeah, but but uh, what it was. You felt it. Yeah, I, I just felt it. And, and it, what it was is that uh, I did a drawing, and it wasn't great. And I was like, oh, let me try that again. Then it turned out great. So I'm like, man, I could do this for a little bit. And boop. Like, wait, Did I you can't. Did you a little and get like a negative experience and stop? Or no, no, no just, connection? well, no, because when I was, uh, when I was little, I'm talking about as far back as I can remember, the only thing I ever wanted to be was a soldier. Oh, sure. That is it. I wanted to be G.I. Joe. My mind was set. No one was going to stop me. Nobody did. They couldn't. I'm just. Now, where was this? I was growing up all over the place. Because because of my dad being yeah. in the army, but I mostly grew up in Maryland, and I'm still in Maryland. I decided to stay in Maryland after I, I retired because yeah. Walter Reed Hospital was so close, and you know, recovery is lifelong. Outside the Beltway, up near. Uh, um, I'm just south Waldorf, of Baltimore. Oh, south of Baltimore. Mm-hmm. You so, are a brave man. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, the school I went to, MICA, Maryland Institute College of Art. It's smack in the middle of Baltimore. It is, uh, you gotta learn how to say it right, Balmer. Balmer. Oh yeah, that's Balmer. exactly what it is, Balmer. Balmer, Balmer, Balmer huh? <laughs> we used to play music in Baltimore, and yeah. I remember you could go from one block area to another block area, yeah, it changes. and it changes like by city street. Yep. And I remember just going in these neighborhoods late at night, and they're like, yeah, you know, stop here. <laughs> this is the, this go is the, early. the demarcation line. Yep, yep. Yeah, wow. it, it's really funny. They've actually changed quite a bit. Uh, the section around, was it, not Johns Hopkins, uh, the Maryland, University of Maryland, uh, they're starting to spread over into the bad side, and uh, they're fixing it up and building it up, and they're Everything just starting to do it. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's the thing, people say, oh, gentrified, that's a bad thing. You mean fixing things is a bad what, thing? People can make a living? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like, we'll struggle with I understand what they say, but you, just because they can't afford, doesn't mean you have to let it keep getting worse I, it's it's dip. i know it's a difficult uh, decision i know it's a it's really hard to come up with an answer but the answer is definitely not leave it alone and while it's it degrading rot. yeah and let yeah. it rot yeah. that is definitely not the answer we run into that even more yep. it's like the people that benefit from that or they're waiting for land prices to depreciate oh yeah so they can yep. swoop yep swoop in. now so are you going to have an art show uh, Jimmy. actually i just took one down but no, I don't, I don't have any art shows on the horizon. I just don't know. Oh, I am. I was on the wait list for a few big things. Uh, Rhode Island School of Design, I was on the wait list for their uh, master's in uh, painting master's program. They take eight students a year, and they put me on the wait list. And I'm, like I said, I didn't pick up a paintbrush until five years ago. How about if I introduced you to some of the people in our county? and got some of your stuff displayed. Would you be interested? I, I would definitely be interested. Places we could set it up on market for sale? I would definitely, 110% be interested. Because I know enough people in the community that I can open some doors. More specifically, I'd love to get you connected with some of our art community in Orange because what you're painting, it seems to be grounded in this sort of surreal, Yes. but there's tail in it. Okay, well, for... Before I just show you all the paintings, yeah. my senior thesis was a nine-foot-tall nude self-portrait. Nice. So that's the first one that's on here. So, but uh, that would be this. This is an oil painting. Powerful. And the first thing I will say, the ground was very cold. Yeah, wow. <laughs> I imagine. it was a concrete floor. Very, very cold. Now, are you going to do prints, sign number prints of these? Uh, not of these. I, I guess eventually. I mean, if people see them. But okay, here's the here's the one I'm most proud of. 
That is my wife with my fifth child, Victoria. Beautiful. But uh, it's funny you say prints because one of the things I do is print making, but I don't, I don't have much in. I have some, this. You're one. prolific. You're painting a lot. So, so this is a print. This is etched into copper, yes. and then I run it through a printing press. It's it's a uh, similar but lithog lithography is uh, they use stones actual stones. Mm -hmm. This is a copper plate that I either engrave it. To, kind of yes. Yeah. Oh, although lithography uses uh, acid as well, but it, they do it onto a stone. So you play with different mediums. Then. Yes. Like. Yes. Uh, now, what wow. is the subject matter that made that? That is. Those are bullet cases, all of them brass. Wow. Oh, man. And then uh, there's two more. This is one of a triptych. Uh, the next one I'm going to make is with AK-47 brass. This breath. is like let God sort of not plan. Yeah. Is that what's going on? No, no, no. This is, uh, uh, for me, it always felt like when I was on the battlefield, you can tell God was there by how big the pile of brass was. Because that's when the, yeah, that, that's when it got heavy. That's when it got uh, scary. Those piles of brass get well, it doesn't go over fast. It drives on. Yeah. And then time disappears, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Gets it, and then drawings and things like that. So, you do things with shadowing that's very. You have a good command of light and dark. Look at that. So this, I drew this, and now that is on. Oh. It's on my arm. <laughs> gotcha. uh, who, and who is that? Actually, it's uh, it was fan art. The show Westworld, uh, the most recent show Westworld from HBO, loved it. So it's that's actually how I started uh, fan art. This is one of the first things I felt that I did really well is our dog. Our dog had passed away, and nice. so I drew this for my parents. Your sadness is in your dog's wow. eyes. Yeah, that's okay. we lost a shepherd. It wasn't a good time. He yeah. just he, he got up in the morning, he fed him, and then in the afternoon he just lay down and, and disappeared. Yeah. Pastel, Ooh. so that's a oh, that's dry pastel, basically chalk, but just good pigment. Yeah, wow, it's glowing. <laughs> Were you in trouble on that one? Yes, I was. <laughs> I, well, no, actually, she was kind of in trouble. Yeah, okay. What I did is I, uh, we had to go somewhere. She didn't want to get out of bed. It's like, honey, we have to go get dressed. No! It's like, I can't hurry up. It's like, I'm going to take a picture of you if you don't get up. It's like, no, I'll do it. And I took the picture. It's like, no! mad at me yeah, yeah, yeah. And so when i started drawing it i wasn't going to do surreal but uh because the our sheets were turquoise so i started i'm like this kind of looks like water and i just went with it we gotta get you to do a, a somebody need the chair i would really love to yes. somebody need the chair the bus going on okay do you he need the shuttle he an official portrait i think yeah, but could you imagine you know what that would be the dream job to to have painted his uh portrait Actually, Obama's official portrait was done by a Micah student, the school I went to. So the one in the bushes. No, wait. That, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. The it, it, there is greenery. One. Lots of greenery. Yeah. 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 They, everybody plays with that. They're like, they got one where one guy's peeking out of it. And <laughs> they did. Have you ever look at the different reinterpretations of the and, Obama painting? And um, Michelle Obama's painting. Oh. So. So my school is actually already known with those people. So that's what I was hoping. So you do the Trump. You hear that, President Trump? Uh, <laughs> I would ah. love that. That would be an, the biggest honor ever. That would be amazing. But yeah, I, I'm just starting though. So I'm not, I don't have no... But there's lead. honesty in your paintings. There's this thing, I, this is like what I was talking about. Our son started painting. He took no school. He just started doing it. Yeah. But, he has this connection with he just do these little pieces at a time and <laughs> you wouldn't understand it and then yeah. suddenly I'll send you a copy of it. Absolutely. Get your number in The brass pile of God. Do you see the pile of the brass? That's a detail that no one would know. There's one that I Where that I'm you really know proud God of. I don't know why there. it's not in that Uh, I'll send you a text. Okay, go. Because I did another with brass. That's actually going to be my uh, my thing. Uh, using brass, I made a relief sculpture out of it. Mm. Mm -hmm. 
So what I did is I just I uh, stacked them neatly together and then ground it down with an angle grinder, which, if you have one hand, is really scary. Yeah. You, you got to watch your RPMs on your grind blades. You really want to have fun. Get a 10,000 RPM grinder. Oh, my God. I, I, I found the smallest one I can yeah. get. Air grinder might change because oh, you can regulate your air pressure oh, that's right. and you could change yeah i didn't think about that pressure. yeah you could get like a um like go to harbor freight they got cheap yeah. air pools you could go to discs like carbide yeah. discs but i'm also afraid of because ankle grinders probably cause the most horrific uh accidents when one of those uh well i guess that's more on the disc than than yeah. the grinder itself yeah those but you can regulate, you can get like a little air regulator and, and well, whereas with electric, you're dealing with... Yeah, you have one current going through, power. one yeah. speed, that's yeah. it. You get what you get. Oh, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Try that one time. Get an air, get an air grind. I am. I definitely it. am. I'm going to find this because it's going to drive me crazy. It's my favorite now. Because that's the direction I'm going at least for the... Does your relationship with your paintings change? I'm sorry? Does your relationship with your paintings change? It does. It does. Like, right now, I, I do love painting. I do love the portrait painting, but I feel that that's not what I want to say right now. Yeah. So, you know, I, I move around to the media, fortunately. Since I, fortunately, I went to general fine art. Oh, well, on that, that nude, here's the, uh, that's the reference. That's how big it is. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Does it have a name? Self. With a lowercase s. And to me, that is very important. Yeah. I do not think I'm some grand thing. I'm just a normal person that went through a tough time. There it is. There you are, baby. This. Ooh. Who is that? That is me. You need to do one of those at Trump. Oh, I would love to. And that here, this one is me because, see that little black dot up there? So, uh, one of my injuries is I am completely 100% deaf. I am a deaf person. I have two cochlear implants. Ah. But if I take them off, nothing. I can't even hear myself talk. That's, That's good for a married ah. man on a computer. I know. <laughs> With the baby. I don't wake up at night when they cry. <laughs> you know, you do one of those at Trump and bring it to the next help in the world. Well, they said they were going to uh, auction my painting on the next helping hero. There's uh, my 14 year old daughter holding a skull. What's her name? That one is Bella Mortis. Her name is Bella. That from, uh, from, uh, Twilight? Just, just Latin. Bella. Latin. No, no, just just Bella Bella. All, all my kids' names mean something. Our last name is Rosa. So my oldest is Melinda, which is my pretty last name Rosa. Rose. She's my pretty Rose. Then Bella, beautiful Rose. And then Vivian, living Rose. And then Victoria, victorious Rose. Or Rose of Victory. Oh, sorry. Oh. All girls. I have I have one son, uh, but he doesn't live. And he's smack in the middle. I have two daughters from my first marriage. I have my son from celebrating that divorce too hard, and then I have two from my current marriage. God bless you, kid. He did. Yeah, he loved kids too. Yeah, yeah. He loved kids more than anything else in this world. I remember one of my favorite she, memories she from Iraq in 2003 is there was this little girl on our route in Baghdad. Whenever we patrolled, she would come out of I don't know, even nowhere. Come out of nowhere. It's like, Yay! And come and grab my hand, and we would walk down the street together, hand in hand. And sometimes I think about her, but I don't think too hard because. Yeah, she probably didn't. That yeah, was a bad place to grow, you know. She probably didn't. Know. But I remember her. I loved that little girl. I called her my little girl. And then apparently, someone in another platoon, uh, we were talking about it. He's like, "No, that's my little girl." She knew this, yeah, she knew the same thing with him. When, Hands off. Yeah, when his platoon would patrol, she'd go and find him. 
I'm like, no, that's my way. Like, Fuck you, dude. That's my girl. <laughs> She's so cute. She's so cute. There's something about kids. Yeah. That's all. Oh. The God, innocent. Never, well, that's why I wanted to work with pediatrics. Oh. That could still happen, I guess. Oh, that, that could absolutely still happen. I'm still trying to find ways to, to help. What I really want to do is get overseas to these refugee camps. I want to draw these kids. I want to bring that back here and show people what's happening with my art. Yes. But uh, that's different, that, especially in my position. You know. <laughs> Refugee camps aren't exactly uh, handicap accessible. Yeah. Well, if you've got a helicopter and a bunch of people around you, now things can happen. Man, I, I, I would love to tell their story. Where would you go first? Right now, I'd go to Palestine. You know, yeah. Israel and Palestine. Those kids that's a, suffer. That's a story that no one's telling. Right now. Those kids suffer because because they're just in the wrong place. Yes, they do anything. I guess it, it's also I carry a lot of guilt over doing this to my oldest daughter because she was she was three when I got home and she went through a lot. She went through a lot with me and then. The divorce with her mother. Her mother was not a person. I, and I have I have sole custody of those children. I mean, for a judge to look at me and say that they're better off in my care, that says a lot. But I, I've always had a very strong support structure. My family, my best friend from high school. Your dad still lives. Yep. Yes. My dad. Uh, my dad, you said. Yeah. Uh, they live in Puerto Rico now. Uh, but they only just recently moved. So like the past, you know. Ton of years, they, they were always there. My parents were always. My there. wife and daughter went to Puerto Rico. They loved yeah. it. Oh, we, they but have they're Puerto Rican town. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, it's so wonderful out there. I'd love to go down there. But that's also one of the political aspects I like to pick up in my art. It's a beautiful place, and I want to go down there. But the schools are terrible. The streets are terrible. The, the drug crime is terrible. And that's because it's just full of corrupt politicians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because it's only a territory, no one up here cares. That's the one triple down economic theory that works corruption. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. Consistent. What's really funny is they always catch, I don't know what this is, but they always catch our politicians by accepting money in shoeboxes. It's like, it's like every politician gets cut. With money in shoebox. It's like, what the fuck's wrong with you? Did they you use a boot or a sock or something? something yeah, else. Yeah, I don't yeah. care. <laughs> it could be a purse or something. I, stop using shoeboxes. It's obvious <laughs> now. <laughs> you think they get they get the picture. Now the Department of Justice is going to be upset that you sort of gave them a head. Right, up. right. <laughs> The FBI, the FBI has been doing a big raise recently. In the past like five years, they've really been getting into it. So hopefully it'll make a dent, but probably not. You know, friends I've had said one of the dilemmas about the culture of that is that what do you mean? That's a system that yeah. works. It's like graft. You know, everybody's like, well, you can't do graft. But then when you look at big politics, it's just, just graft in a more... What is it, complex and, 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 and obfuscated way, you know? Yeah. Puerto Rico is, I think what it is, the Puerto Rican people are used to being a territory to either, for Spain, now the U.S., and it's been going on so long that that's just the system that they know. Yeah. yeah. And that's, so everybody's like, <laughs> okay with it. I can't believe that back in the day. We need protection. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, we got you. Come on, just give us your kids and join the military. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, Puerto Ricans serve the military oh, their numbers in are huge, roles. Yeah, yeah. And that's partly because we, we are proud to be Americans. Very proud to be Americans. And the, okay. the second half of that is that there's nothing else. There's nothing to work the, the local politics have already destroyed everything. So there's nowhere else to get a good, decent career. Do you, do, yeah. you know, do you know the story of the Christopher Columbus statue? The what? The Christopher Columbus statue. No, no. Okay, yeah, there was something like, 
it was, I don't, I couldn't retell it, but it was like, basically this mayor bought the statue from this other mayor and they, it's Christopher Columbus. And they put it in the middle of this basically rainforest and you can't get to it. It's like, it's what? just there, you know, it's in the, and they said the the mayor that bought it was a drunk or something like that. It was ridiculous. It was, I, it was, I'm going to look that up. Too. Look it up. I think I don't want to say it was Arecibo, but I feel like it was around that area. Arecibo. Yeah, yeah. Arecibo. Oh, cool. You Somewhere know Arecibo. Around Arecibo's yeah. close to where uh, my family is. Yeah. They went. It's funny. And then they went back again the next year. Just for I think the stupidest thing they did is they, they kicked the Marine Corps and the Navy out of there. The towns that they were in are now dead. Dead. Who kicked it, them out? The, the woke. Oh, yeah. But this is back in the early 2000s. It, but it it's the same rhetoric. It was the same rhetoric. It's like, there was no damn reason. Yeah. Uh, the, the claim was that one aircraft had, while flying over, had lost ordnance and it went through a house. And that is sad, but it's, it's just an accident. Yes. Yeah. Well, they dropped a nuclear bomb somewhere in, where was it, in Virginia or something. You hear that old story? There's no. An old, yeah, look up the nuclear bomb that the military lost. Totally and it, and it was found in uh, either North Carolina or South Carolina. <laughs> They're like, oops. It's a horrible accident, yes, but... This is this is life, you know. Yeah. That base brought so much prosperity to everybody there, and it's now like it's gone. Shaw Air Force Base, where I grew up yes. as a kid, without that base there, there's, there's nothing. nothing. There used to be cotton mills. I mean, when those sailors get off duty, when those Marines get off duty, when they're going to go into the community. They're going to spend their money, probably take a few of the women, those bastards. Yeah, sons of bitches. But then again, I'm kind of into the white girls, so it, it's, we're even. <laughs> <laughs> we're even. Let's call my, it even. My yeah. wife's a redhead. Oh, you went all in on the I went wife. all in, the whitest I can find. <laughs> so, so did you know what you were signing up for? A little bit. Yeah, little bit. She yeah. has some fire. Yeah, yeah she has some fire. Well, Puerto Rican, those girls yeah, have yeah, fire. Yeah, just Ooh. Yeah. Oh, well, my first wife was, she wasn't Puerto Rican, she was Dominican. They got the same fire, and I'm, I don't want that no more. <laughs> I'm good. I actually married her twice. Nice practice. That's uh, perfect. Right? Yeah, yeah. So technically, I'm in my third marriage, but second wife. <laughs> and you know what? That's actually a very common story inside of the army. This, oh, it's yeah. common. Our son, we could tell you stories about yeah. this. <laughs> We're passionate, man. It's just, it's the passion. Yeah. Like, oh, let's give it another go. The what? Like giving it another go. <laughs> yes. It's like, oh, I can make it work. Figure Damn, it I was wrong. It was, it was kind of a sad Aww. story. At the, at the end, what she was after is uh, my life insurance. When there's a traumatic clause in our life insurance, and I got $100,000. It made it for one year. One year and it's all gone. Uh, and I was like, what the fuck? Now, I did take a bunch of it. I paid off a bunch of the bills, thankfully, before it emptied out. But, yeah, I didn't, I didn't spend much of it. I can only imagine the complexity of managing the finances post-traumatic And from inside of a hospital yeah, yeah, with yeah, a gnarly-ass yeah. brain injury, too. And dealing with yeah. Yeah, all of it. And dealing with the divorce and, and custody and then just the slutty wife. <laughs> It was, yeah, it was difficult. It was totally difficult. You made it. And still trying to get myself up. Actually, that's the reason I'm not walking right now, because I had to focus on one or the other, you know? I'm glad I focused on what I did, though, because sole legal custody of my children is the best thing I could ever do. 